All right, this week we're going to be working on a text adventure game. And this game um, is similar to games you've probably played on the web where you have a player who uh, moves through kind of a story or creates their own story as they journey through a lot of decisions and that takes them into different scenes or has them interact with different creatures or whatever. Um, and this, let me just demo, I've got one done here how this will work is you'll, you'll enter the player name and then you'll be presented with a couple of choices and as you make choices it will write up a story and then you can either end the story or you can undo the last choice, go for the cheese, find the cat, you know, so it's kind of like you can kind of keep this story going. So we're going to see how that's written and the way that that uh, does come about is not through a lot of complex logic, but through a data-driven program um, where a data structure will provide data that will help to create the choices and write the story. So we'll see how that works. Let's fork this and we'll fork it to my text adventure. And um, this is actually a common way to write. In fact, we favor data-driven apps over logic. Writing a lot of logic code is a lot of testing involved. And let's see, so I'm going to clone this down here. And Then we'll go open that up and take a look at this data structure and what this looks like. So let's see, open text adventure. And here is my main JS. This is what I'm going to be changing. Uh, uh, you know, clearly you're going to have an index HTML built for you linked to the main JS. You have some HTML structure that, that's already set up and you've got some CSS set up. So have a look at those, but the coding will be done here. And what you're going to see is that you're not going to write a whole lot of code because the data is going to be doing the work for you. It's more here the challenge is understanding the data and how to make it what you need to do in the code to be able to use it. And so this data is this story data and this is declared with a var rather than a letter const. Var will give you a global variable and in fact var does something called hoisting which means it moves it it moves the declaration all the way to the top of the file. So this story data will be known everywhere in the file. Um, that makes, generally we don't like global variables because they lend themselves to side effects. If you accidentally use that same name in a function and change it, you might be changing this data that you're sort of depending on to not change. But this is the way we're set up here. You'll see var used a, a lot before ECMAS 6 when we got const and let. But anyways, um, let's say we have, let's look at this data and understand it. We have an object, because we can tell by the curly braces, we have this really big object. And um, in it, we have um, key value pairs, so title. And then notice we have these P1, home end, P2. These are our slugs, and they represent keys to a page. So they will have the story that you get if you make if you choose that slug. And then they also provide the choices for where to go next. So note that they each have a slug that if a user clicks on this text button with this text, it's going to tell the program take them to this slug. So that's kind of the way it works. And if we look at some analysis, so I've got a draw IO diagram of all these slugs and I drew all the arrows to see where it was. And it's a, it's a mess, isn't it? It's just total spaghetti. If you had to write this logic, like a lot of if then else's and nested and going back and forth, it'd probably just drive you crazy. But you're going to see that with this data driven app, you um, are going to write relatively small amount of code to deal with it. So let's go take a look at what we're going to do in here. First thing to look at is the variables that we're going to be using because these will this is what will help organize 
our interaction of our code with this data structure. And so we're going to collect a player name. Um, our choice list, so that's going to be a list of the things that we have chosen to do. And it's going to be implemented as an array. So that means that there is an order to it. It's not an unordered list. It's an ordered list. And um, we will be also defining current page. And that will give us the data that will show at any given uh, point in time. So these are considered states. These, these slugs represent states. And we, that's an important term in computer science. In fact, this is basically a state machine. It's, it's a code that will move us from one state to the next and keep track of where we've been or what choices that we've made. So the first function that we're going to write here is, well, right here, we're going to do a prompt to get the username. So this is pretty pretty common, or this pretty familiar um, prompt. You know, and, and just to be totally kosher, I'm going to use window prompt. Window is a global object that um, contains a lot of functions. Prompt is one of them that we've been using with global functions. You, you don't always have to include them. Um, and I'm going to give it a default just to make that easy for myself. And then um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a, a current page. And this is going to accept one parameter, which is called slug. So parameters and arguments, we have the concept of parameters are what we call the variables coming in. And arguments are what we call the variables when you see them going out. So somewhere, somebody's calling this, this current page. Somebody calls current page. Let's see if all the places that we can find current page. Looks like right down here. So in this code, you'll notice at the bottom of this is main script. This is written for us. And we don't really need to change this unless you're working on some kind of a stretch goal. But this code is a, sets up the title um, on the page, grabs hold of some elements of the DOM, which we haven't really learned about yet, sets up a couple functions that we're, we don't need to really do anything with, and then calls this, um, and then um, sets up a current page as story data one. So that, I, that initializes our first page to that P1 slug, and then calls update page. So this is the kind of the flow of the program as you come in, sets current page, calls update page. And if we go find that, we'll see that this is up, update page is defined in this function. We're not writing it. But notice it is sending out, um, it is receiving page from current page. So in, in, the, in nomenclature here, current page here is called an argument. It's a value that we're sending out. And then as it comes into this function, it, it's called a parameter. So that's just nomenclature, that when it's going out, it's an argument. When it comes in, it's a parameter. And notice they don't have to be the same name. They, they represent variables. So this variable has to be defined in this scope. But over here, it can change its name. But once it's in this scope, it now is called page. These are lessons we're going to get to, but I just want you to kind of understand how this flows. So once you're in this, um, once you're in here, it's going to kind of get that first page going. Um, but uh, what we need to do here is write code that will actually um, manage uh, the choices. So as we come in here, we're going to be uh, All right, so we call this update page, and it does some work on our DOM, which we're, we're not going to have to worry about. And then it calls add event listeners. So you can kind of see how this flows. This takes us into this function add event listeners. And from here, we do some work with the DOM. And in the process of that, we uh, call change page. OK, and so change page is one of the functions that we're asked to write. 
So let's start with that function. We've, we've got like um, a site, we've got that first function with the prompt done, but let's start by working on this change page function. And um, because that is the function that gets called when you click on a link. So let's see what we need to do. It kind of describes this to us. Um, we're going to have a function called change page. And that function, so our function syntax, um, syntax just being the rules, the ordering that we do things in, and we need to do this so that this code can be interpreted by a machine and turned into something that the computer can run. So our function, we have the function, the keyword function, we have the name of the function, and then we have a, the, the parentheses where we might put parameters um, into. So it should, and it should use the, it should have a slug. So this is going to get one of those keys, be sent one of those keys from our story. And we're going to call it slug. Um, let's see, as the parameter. And it should set up the current page value by calling the get current page with the slug that we gave it as uh, the parameter. So um, we're going to call, um, oh, first of all, we're going to call record, yeah, we're going to call record choice, record choice. Um, and right now our, our function, it doesn't recognize, I mean, our IDE doesn't recognize record choice because we haven't actually written it. Let's just go put in a, make it in there without anything going on in it, but just so that the IDE knows about it. So it's not doing anything, but we've got our syntax for a function in there. And once we do that, then record choice should show up. Uh, yeah, so record choice shows up. And we're told, sorry, that's my dog. Uh, we're told that we're going to give it a slug as a parameter. So we're taking, and really that, I mean, that is... We really more that's an argument at this point but we're using this parameter slug and we're just passing it along to record choice okay and since we haven't really written record choice we don't really know exactly what that does but we're following these instructions and then we are going to set the current page by calling current page and give it the slug so get current page and get slug and we are going to actually refer to that global variable that we set up at the top there current page equals so remember we have this current page so we get this current page set up and so basically this is in changing a page. We're given a slug, we record it. We don't know exactly what that means, but we kind of have a hint that we're gonna save it somewhere. And we do know that we have that array that we're gonna be saving choices in. Um, and then we're told to update the page and give it the current page. So we call update page. Now we haven't written that either. So let's just go put in the, let's put in just the shell of that, which is get current page. That will help our IDE to, to know about it. And so we'll say update page, current page. So this is not very much code, but what it's doing is saying that when, when the user clicks on a button and we call change page, we're going to record the choice they made. We're going to set the new current page based on that choice. We're going to get the data for it and set that as the current page. And then we're going to update the page to be current page. Um, so let's now take a look at these two that we haven't filled in. And right now it probably is like totally a mystery to you what all of this is doing. And I think once we get it coded, we can step through it in the in the debugger and kind of see the flow of this whole thing. So let's go ahead and do the record choice. 
um, we also are going to have this undo choice. So let's start with record choice because this is where you've made a choice and now you want to keep track of it. And so what we're going to do is like we have that choice list, that, that container, that array container, and we're going to um, use the push command, that's in the array function push, which will add something to our array. And we're going to, oh, we're, we're, I think we're told to use a slug parameter, and we're going to record that slug. So we've just added that slug, which is really that, that key to the data about this um, particular choice. We've added that to our choice list. And then let's just go ahead and log this just so we can kind of see what happens. So logging, you can add comma separated items to the log and they can be strings or objects, whatever you want. Um, well, let's say, let's use interpolation here. So we'll say added to choice array and we'll just put the slug here and then we'll be able to take a look at that. So we've, we've, we're recording the choice. Let's take a look at current page. So this should accept one parameter. Again, we're taking a slug. And this function will fetch the current page and return a page object. So the page, the slug is just the key. We now need to get the data behind it. So page, current page equals story data slug. So um, story data is, is an object, and we can pull um, data out of objects using keys, and so we can use this notation similar to what we do with an array, the square brackets, when we have a variable. If, you know, we, if we know the exact name of the key, like if we, if we say story data dot p1, that's, and that is an actual, uh, value of a key, whereas here we have a variable. It's different it's every, you know, every time we call the function. So we can't use the dot notation on it. We have to use the square brackets to access that a very, when we're using a variable to access the key va value of, a, of an object. So that gets us the data, and then we're told to return the page object. So this will, will um, return current page. OK, so that's really all the code we have to write here. Oh, we do have an undo function. So let's write this. And who calls that? Let's see. We have an undo function. It is, we attach a let, an event listener to that undo last choice, that little uh, button that we had down at the bottom. And so when you click on it, it's going to call this undo function. So we need to code this and function undo choice. And again, the names of these are fixed because there's certain event listeners looking for these functions and um, also case sensitive. So, you know, in writing these functions, be, beware of that. Um, but the purpose of this is to remove the last slug in the choice list. So if we remove the last slug in the choice list, that will make that that will just take away that choice. And the way that we remove um, items from an array is using the pop command. So we'll just choice list pop, and that will just basically take that that last value added off. So push and pop, they both add to the end, push adds to the end of the array and pop takes off the last item from the array. Um, there are other functions if you need to remove from the beginning of the array or the middle of the array, but push and pop are used a lot because we often are just operating at the end of the array. Let's go ahead and log something here too. So console log returning previous page choice list choice list dot length minus one. What are we doing here? We're saying that so our choice list again is an array of these keys for the story. 
the story data and we are, we've removed one and so what we're going to do is return the one that's remaining. So we took off the last one so we're going to return the second to the last one. Um, and this minus one isn't because it's the second to the last, it's because we, we count from zero. So if we have an array that's five elements long, the last one is the index four. So we have to take the length of five and subtract one. But we came in here with six, right? We popped one, we've got five left, and now we're going to access the one at the end of the list. So this is a common sort of idiom you would see in grabbing the last item from an array is that you would take the array name and take the length of the array minus one to get the last item. So once we've got that item, or once we, once we are aware that that's what we need to return, so we need to ha you know, keep, you know, have a state available after we've removed this current state. And so we'll just return that. Okay, so that is the extent of our programming. We haven't done any if statements. We haven't had to implement any logic. So our testing would be really easy for this in terms of if I was writing automated testing. Um, it's completely dependent on the state of structure. And in fact, if I want to change the flow of this, I don't have to change any code. I just change the data. And data is a lot more manipulable than code because there's a lot, it's just um, a lot of testing required on code with data. You can test it pretty quickly. So um, let's just uh, take a look at running this and see what how this program flows to kind of um, make sure that it runs quickly. So to run it, let's first make sure that it works the way that we would expect. So yeah, it pops up after my name, gives me some, oh, let me, let's open up our, um, okay, yes, okay, we have a console, we'll just leave that kind of open to see if any errors pop up. Notice there is a background here, this wave background, so you'll see that in the, in the um, repository, there's this vertical waves, and it's getting added in here, so that's not like a bad like, I don't know if that's looking funny in the video, but anyway, there is a wave background there. Feel free to play around with the CSS on this in any way you want. So reload this. You are a crow named Becky. You are flying high above the countryside. You know, and it, you, it interpolated my name, my username. You see a farm to the west and a home forest off to the east. So I'm going to fly to the west, and then by doing that, um, it tells me whether now I'm on this farm, there's a piece of cheese on a table, no people looking at what you can see, cheese looks tasty, you're worried there might be a person or a cat lurking, should I go for the cheese or should I decide it's not worth it? I'm going to go for the cheese. And I've got to veer off to the left or fly directly at the cat. Let's, since I know I can undo, let's go to the cat. And it says, find somewhere else to eat the cheese. Okay, let's see where that goes. Oh, now I'm looking at Mr. Frank. You can see how this just keeps going. And if I want to undo that, I can go back here. Well, there's only one choice here. I could undo that. You know, and basically I'm just pushing and popping on that array. Okay, so that is kind of how this flows. And if we want to like really get into inspecting it, um, what I would do is open up the source code and remember how I said with these, all these functions, none of these functions are going to run. We're really not going to, they're just sitting there waiting to be called. And we really don't run any real code until we get down here. Um, we're not really responsible for this, but let's take a look at when we do get to our code. And I'm not going to worry about this prompt, but let's say when we get, let's put breakpoints in all of our code just to see how we got there. So let's reload and we'll hit that. Okay, and oh, there's story data. So, you know, um, we don't need to necessarily stop there, but let's put a point after that, at the end of that, so that we come over here. And I'll just show you a little bit about, so over here in the scope, um, I've got the choice list. I've got current page, player page, and notice I have a global. I would expect 
to see my story data in here. You can see there's a lot of global variables going on in um, kind of, sometimes when you can't find something uh, right away, you can set up a watch. So you just come over here. Looks like I have some old watches left in here. I'll just clear those out and I'll set up a watch on the story data. Even though it's not going to change, but I just don't want to plow through all that global stuff. So story data, you can see it's an array. Um, it has that title and then it's got a bunch of objects and these objects, oh, actually uh, have, you can see the slugs appear as keys and then there's objects that contain the choices and the text. So you can really examine how that looks in the, in the, in the debugger too. But here we are, we're, at, we're starting the program where we're going to put in our title and we're just going to do all this and then let's just see what happens when we, how we get into our function. So our functions happen when I say fly over there. So I, I have triggered an event, it takes me into change page. You can see I've picked P2 and it's going to record choice and if I want to like step into that I use this step into. Normally I use step over if I'm just going sequentially but step into takes me into that function. Now I'm in record choice. I'm still P2 and I'm going to push choice list. And you can see right now choice list is an empty array. If I push it, it now has P2 in it. Then I'm going to log this and that should show up in my console. So I added choices array P2. So it's really good to just spend some time stepping through your program and seeing this flow because if you have to debug logic this is how you might go about doing it. Now I'm going to get the current page so let's step into that and there's the slug and then I've got story data and I'm going to pull the P2 object out and there you go it's this one and I'm going to return it so when I return if I want to follow out of that I use step out of so it's this up arrow and it takes me back to this change page and now I'm going to update page so I'll step into that function and this is one that I didn't write but if you're interested you can step through and see how this gets updated don't spend too much time now because we really haven't learned about doing DOM manipulation but there I'm on event, add event listeners and then I'm done done with that and step out of you know, I'm basically, I'll just hit this blue arrow to finish off. So I'm, I'm done with handling that click that I just did. And same if I click on undo choice, it takes me into undo choice and I'm going to call pop. So right now I've got that P2 on there. And what's going to happen here? This could be a problem. So I'm going to hit that console log and that'll just tell me that I'm returning page choice such and such. Oh, you know, I didn't put that in, I didn't interpolate that variable, so you're just seeing it as a string. I'll probably should go fix that. I'm kind of curious, is there anything, since there's nothing left in there, what is gonna, what's it going to pick? Let's just use the watch to see that. Because this could be a problem if you're down at the end of the list and you try to access something What's going to happen? Let's see. Choice it says not available. So I think that might be a problem. Let's see what happens if I step out of this. So current page. When it tries to get current page, it's undefined. That's what I thought. So we do kind of have a little issue there where we, we aren't really dealing with the fact that when we were at the end, we only have one item in our choices that we we haven't really dealt with that. So let's let's deal with that now. So we saw that we could have a problem there because we tried to pop an empty list and of course there's nothing there. If we look at the console, yes indeed we did have an error. 
the error showed up when we tried to update page and there really wasn't a page there. There wasn't anything there. So I'm going to add logic to deal with that. So let's go back into the code. Um, first of all, and, that, and our little write-up doesn't really tell us that we need to deal with that, and I think it might even be a stretch goal. But let's take a look at that. Um, so first of all, let's we want to interpolate this so that we let's turn this off. We'll interpolate that. So we're just now we're this is a variable, right? And oops. That's a variable, and we want to see the value of it. We don't want to see the text. Because this is the point where you have your choice list, you've popped it down to zero, and now you're taking minus one. So choice list minus one, that is, that is undefined. It's not a good thing. And so um, basically what I want to do is that if I pop, oh, if I pop to undo, and my list is empty, I'm going to just go ahead and fill it with P1. So if um, choice list dot length equals equals zero, and those triple equals, that's just because JavaScript can interpret, it can interpret a zero, the, the number zero, as true, false. There's, it's like there are things that come up false that aren't really Boolean. And so to be exact when we do test, the triple zero ensures that it's testing for exactly the right type and value, not doing any kind of coercion. So um, if I detect after a pop that my length is zero, I am just going to do this. Choice list push. It's kind of like my initialization step. I am just going to put the P1 in there. So remember, that's how we initialized we said we updated current page story data p1 um, and that was kind of how we we got that in that original um, current page we sent in the p1 slug and we we kind of initialize we initialize current page that way well we're going to keep our choice list with at least p1 in it and see if that helps um, and then when we go to pick the length, now the length will be just one, right? And the length minus one will be zero. And when we grab choice list zero, that will be P1. And we'll, let, we'll take a look at that. So let's just see how this works. We've still got our breakpoints. They don't go away. As long as we are in the inspector, they will stop for us. So let's um, let's just say right now, if we look at our sources and look at our code, um, if I click on undo choice. So I come into undo choice. Um, it's actually zero right now. I'm not even sure if that can pop. It didn't, let's see, did that give us any errors? Nope, it, it just kind of ignored it. But our choice list.length is zero. So I'm going to just put one on it. And then I'm going to log that and notice it logs P1. So I'm just handling that problem with a little bit of logic and then it's as if I didn't do anything. So the effect of that is I didn't do anything. And then if I do make a choice, okay, so now I've made a choice um, and if I go to undo my choice list, oh, it's got two things in it, so that's no problem. It will just go ahead and it will tell me that it undid the last choice and now it went back to P1 and now I'm if I undo this choice again this is just like that first time sorry some technical difficulty there let's take a, again look at what happens by adding this uh, little bit of logic that deals with the fact that we might be trying to undo a choice when there is only one left 
and then we need to still be able to return a current state and a current page. So uh, let's just go back in there and refresh this page and we will uh, let this run and then we will click on our undo last choice and the fact is the choice list is empty um, but we're testing for that and we're putting a value in it p1 is our initialization and then now choice list does contain one and when we look over here see choice list choice list length that should have a value in it let's see take, let's see choice list so I'm just getting this value in here so I can look at it real time choice list actually I can see it right down here choice list contains one value <clears throat> and it is P1. So when I return that, it will just give me my P1 slug and that page that had the initial values will be on there. And no matter how many choices I make, if I somehow work my way down to just one, um, I will always be back. Um, if I try to undo, I'll always at least have that home page. So I hope that helps. And if you're interested in this, I encourage you to, to play around with it. And, you know, you can do some of these stretch goals. Um, let's see, like, um, you could add an image to your data and display that when you're on an associated page. That kind of is almost easier to identify than reading the story. Uh, you can set up an undo mechanism. We did that. So um, that's kind of what we were looking at on undo. Um, or you can, you know, there's a number of variations that you can get on that. Um, you could change the story, you could add more slugs, you, you know. So feel free to dive into some of these advanced, and if you do and you run into problems, just slack, because I'm interested in seeing where you might go with that. Um, just for your information, just to share with you, there is this site, um, I'll put the link out on... Um, on our discussion, um, to, but um, this this will let you kind of visualize what happens because okay, pushing and popping an array, <clears throat> this kind of array management and this data structure is referred to in computer science as a stack, um, and the idea is that you have this stack of things and you're taking things off the top and putting them on the top, so it moves up and down, and you can play around with this. So I could um, push. And this kind of makes you visualize it, which for me always really helps to see what's going on. So you can see I'm just pushing values on t onto this stack. And then when I call pop, I'm taking them off of the stack. So it figures out the top and then it removes it. And that top again is always the, the length of the array, however many things are in it, minus one. So if that helps you um, to help visualize it, you can you can do that and you can play with the speed and so forth so i'll share this link with you all right well i hope that this helps you to better understand working with a data-driven program and um, the benefits of it um, and there you know and then also being able to debug step through your code and make sure that you understand the flow and that your data is what you expect it to be at the time that it's used all right Let's just go finish this off um, by pushing it up to GitHub. So get status, get add, get commit. Um, get push. All right, and we'll go over to GitHub. Uh, let's see, we can cancel all these out. And here I am. Let's refresh. Text adventure settings. Uh, and then master save. Okay, it's not published yet, but we'll open that up. 
and we'll grab that link and put it. So you notice when I cloned, I picked up the SU Web Dev link. I don't want to see that in grading, so go ahead and, and it's not the link that you coded. So just go ahead and put that Becky Peltz or whatever your domain name is. And be sure and turn in this link, github.com, and then whatever link is, is being has been published and it may have your domain name. All right, that's it.